Welcome back. We're looking at columns some more. When working with columns, the contract between you and SiteGrinder is that the children of the column that you've provided are more or less arranged on a loose grid um, or perhaps stacked up like a column and do not overlap each other significantly. If they do overlap each other significantly, then you are telling SiteGrinder, well, you know, do what you will. And what SiteGrinder will do is when the children of the column are overlapping, it will probably separate some of the children into the foreground of the column, some of the children into the background of the column, and others of the children into the flowing part of the column. And only the flowing part of the column is the part that adjusts when it resizes. And to see a little more of what I mean by all this, let's take a look at this particular document. This document has a, uh, uh, some text at the top, uh, some more text below that, and it has a gra uh, crapulent graphic that is squarely underneath one of the text layers. And then joining it all together is a column. So the text layer and the graphic that are sitting atop one another are going to be the thing that uh, are going to be open to interpretation. So when this is built, it looks like this. Now at first that seems like it's not so bad, but no, what happens when we start to add text to this particular document or we start to change the text size? Look at this. It's the, uh, the text is moving, but the graphic is staying fixed in its position, and that's probably not making us happy. So what to do about it? In this particular situation, what you need to do is you need to group the other text and that other graphic together. Um, there are a couple different ways of grouping them. Um, one would be to use a nested column inside this column or a nested panel. You can, in this particular case, uh, we can do either way. So I'm just going to make a new layer and I'll uh, choose a slightly, um, I'll choose a diff slightly different color for it and uh, maybe a little more towards orange so we can keep track of it. And I'm going to position this layer so it's grouping together these two items. Now, since we want these two items, if we really want them to be frozen so that they do not move at all relative to one another, then we're going to use the panel hint for that. So I'll just name it something and put the panel hint on it. The panel hint is a bit like the opposite of the column, whereas a column says, my children are, should be flowing and maintain their relative relationship to one another, a panel says, my children are frozen where they are uh, like icicles and they should not um, change their relationship with one another. They uh, want them to stay where they are. And so by putting a panel inside the column in this fashion, we've now, we've now the, the column has only two children now. It has the text at the top and it's got the panel and its children um, at the bottom and therefore the column is going to uh, work correctly. Now another option for handling this might have been to convert that particular graphic, uh, potentially look at making that one since it's sort of a container for text into a center cut column, but we'll be seeing more about center cut columns in just a, in a few videos. So we'll just go ahead and uh, build this. All right, let's reload. And now everything is happy. So now, as I grow and shrink the text, notice that the, the graphic is moving because it has been grouped together in the panel and the whole panel is moving. Now, panels are fixed size, um, so I can't, you know, this is not a yet a, um, a resizable container. We can use a center cut column for that if we wanted this, this blue gradient graphic to grow as its children text grew, uh, but we'll look at that in a few videos. But anyway, so now you've seen uh, columns and how uh, columns, when they have overlapping layers, behave um, and what to do about it if you want to take control over that, meaning using nested panel. Thank you very much.